Hey guys, welcome back to Farm Life with Kids. Today I'm going to be starting my seeds from Baker's Creek and I'm going to be using these trays that I purchased on Amazon. I'll go ahead and link it in the description below so in case you're interested, you can go ahead and purchase them yourself. Um, I really do like them. They have the lid on top and also the tray on the bottom for the water reservoir to like kind of self water which is really convenient if you you know don't have a lot of time to be watering every day so for me it is perfect and they come with these two tools this tool here will help you make a hole where you're gonna place your seed and this one will help you get out your seedling when it's ready to be transferred out into the garden okay so now I'm gonna begin to prepare my first tray by filling it up with soil I chose miracle Grow potting mix, but go ahead and feel free to choose any soil of your preference. Now while I'm doing that, let's talk growing zones. Here in the United States, we have growing zones, and depending on where you live, you can grow different types of crops at different times in the year. I am in Southern California Zone 8B, and this picture here shows me when I should start my seeds indoors, when to transplant outside, and when I should expect harvest. Today is March 14th, and yes, I'm a little bit late on starting my seeds. But without further ado, I'll go ahead and start sowing my seeds. Here, I'm starting off with my Boston Pickling Cucumber from Baker's Creek. I'm trying to do one to two seeds in each hole just to make sure that I get a seedling in each cell. I also always tend to sow more seeds than I need just because sometimes some of the seedlings die or you need to replace one or two so you just need to have some extra backups. It's better to have more than to not have enough. Boston pickling cucumbers are an old heirloom dating back to the 1800s with vigorous vines giving large yields of smooth green fruit. They are excellent for pickling, very crisp and good in quality. A very popular variety at the turn of the 20th century. Cucumbers generally grow best in zones 2 through 10. Alright, so now I'm going to do the honeydew orange flesh from Baker's Creek. And for this one, since the seeds are bigger, I'm just going to go ahead and put one seed per hole. And I'm going to do three rows of that. This variety has a crisp and crunchy texture of a honeydew with fragrance of orange flesh. With a light green smooth skin, this variety has a unique twist with sublime flavor. This variety of honeydew grows best in zones 4 through 11. Alright, so next I'm going to do tomatillo verde. And I'm gonna do two rows of that. And since the seeds are smaller, I went ahead and put about three seeds in each hole. As with most tomatillo varieties, this provides a deep green fruit with a standard rich flavor. Tomatillos grow best in zones eight through 10, but can be grown as annuals in all zones. And that completes my first tray. For this next tray, I'm going to go ahead and start some peppers. The first one will be the serrano peppers. And since the seeds are small, I'm going to go ahead and put two to three seeds in each hole. This iconic chili comes from Hidalgo and Puebla, states of Mexico. It is only second to the jalapeno in popularity. Serranos do have similar characteristics, except that the serrano averages two to three times hotter than the jalapenos. They are typically a bit thinner and shorter as well. Serrano peppers do best in zones 9 through 11, but can be accommodated to zone 8. This will be my first year trying it in my garden. Next, I'm going to sow my jalapeno pepper seeds. This jalapeno variety is a classic developed at Redwood City Seeds. This pepper is great for making salsa, and it is not as spicy as its cousin, the serrano pepper. 
Jalapenos are heat loving plants and they love zones 7 through 9. Next, I'm going to be starting my mini bell pepper mix seeds. And again, because they are small seeds, I do place more than one seed in each hole. This colorful variety of pepper was originally developed in Idaho. And the seeds were first introduced to the Seed Savers Exchange by a member, Lucina Cress. Lucina Cress received the seeds from an elderly neighbor woman and began to grow them out. Soon, Lucina was selling them by the hundreds, and today they are delicious and enjoyed as snacks or perfect for any sort of dish. And now I've completed my second tray. For my next tray, I'm going to be starting with my California Wonder Bell Pepper. This right here is your classic bell pepper, and according to the rareseeds.com site, this takes about 70 days from seed to harvest. Bell peppers typically grow best in zones 3 to 9. Alright, so next I'm going to be starting my poblano peppers. Poblanos are one of the most popular chilies in Mexico, with 3 to 6 inch heart shaped fruit and usually gentle in heat. After roasting and peeling, this pepper is classic for chiles rellenos. And when the pepper is dried, it can be turned into ground authentic red chili powder. According to rareseeds.com, this variety takes about 75 days from seed to harvest and typically grows in zones 9 through 11. Okay, so next I'm going to start my watermelon seeds. This is a legendary commercial melon from early 20th century with old fashioned sugary sweet watermelon flavor. Stone Mountain was introduced in 1923 by Hastings Seeds Company of Atlanta, Georgia and went on to becoming one of the top commercial melons of 1930s and 40s, but now it is almost extinct due to the mass production of hybrids. This variety is set to produce nice sized fruit weighing about 30 pounds with that red, sweet, juicy flesh of a watermelon. Watermelon tend to thrive in zones 3 to 11. The next seed that I'm going to be starting is the white flesh tomato that I received as a gift for my purchase. According to their site, this is an amazing heirloom that is bursting with fragrance and natural goodness that is hard to beat. Being both sweet and rich in flavor, this creamy colored fruit is beautiful, smooth, and weighs in at about 8 ounces each. The vines set heavy yields of fruit and are sure to become a favorite of gourmet growers. And with this, I'll be moving on to my next tray. In this tray, I'll be starting three different types of tomato, beginning with the world's earliest tomato, also known as a sub-arctic plenty. This is a determinate type of variety, and it is the very earliest tomato, taking about 50 days from seed to harvest. This is also one of the best tomatoes for cooler climates and will set fruit in lower temperatures than most. This particular variety was developed by Dr. Harris in Alberta, Canada and can be grown successfully in zones 2 through 11.
This next tomato is the Martinos Roma tomato and it is also a determinate variety. This variety is said to produce fantastic yields of richly flavorful plum-shaped tomatoes on compact plants that require very little staking. According to their site, this variety is resistant to early blight and is great for making sauces, salsas, and pastes. Growing best in zones 3 to 11. This next one is also one of my gift packets that I received with my purchase and it is the yellow pear tomato. With all of my tomato seeds, I'm placing more than one seed in each hole. This variety takes about 80 days from seed to harvest and it is a very sweet yellow pear shaped fruit that has a mild flavor and great for eating fresh. All right, for this next tray, I'm going to be doing zucchini gray, dragon tongue beans, and sunflowers. According to their site, this zucchini gray takes about 49 days from seed to harvest. It is great tasting, high in quality, and produces very well. Flesh is firm, mild, and very tasty. This variety of squash usually grows best in zones three to 10. And because they do have bigger seeds, I'm only placing one seed per hole. Next, I have my dragon tongue bush bean. This famous Dutch heirloom bean has an incomparable flavor. With tender and superbly delicious 7-inch pods that are yellow with amazing purple streaks. This bean makes a tasty shelled bean and is very popular with chefs and gourmet recipes. This delicious bush bean has compact plants that set high yields. The seeds are big, of course, so I'm only placing one seed per hole. Last but not least, I'm going to be starting my sunflower seeds. This is a classic looking heirloom sunflower with pure yellow petals and dark centers. This makes it perfect for using as a cup flower or planting along a fence or in a barn. Most sunflowers are usually hardy to zones 4 to 9. Alright you guys, that's it for this video. Make sure that you subscribe so you can follow my 2021 Baker's Creek Vegetable Garden. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!